Like we said, um, in our system, we have we do addition, we do multiplication. Okay, so we have multiplier. If we have x n, that's the input, and we may scale it by alpha, and the output is simply alpha x n. So, for example, for example, our signal is the impulse function. What would be, that's the input. What would be the output of the multiplier? Still an impulse? It's still an impulse, right? It's still an impulse, but it's not unit impulse anymore. It's still an impulse. And the value here is going to be alpha. This is a unit impulse, so it's e one here, and this now it's going to be scaled by alpha, and all the other samples are still zero. So that's a multiplier. And then how about an adder? We add two signals together. We have x one in, and we have an x two in. And the output is y n. Now suppose this is x one n, right? And x two n is a delay, zero one two n, and this is delta n minus two. Okay, and we add them together. We add them together. When we add them together, we add samples by samples. Y n for each sample value of Y n is the nth sample of X1 plus the nth sample of X2. Okay? So what will be the output here? Y n. What would the output look like in this case? It has how many non-zero samples? Two. One at zero and one at two. So that's what it looks like. All right. And then we have also have memories, right? We also have a memory. Here in ARM, we have a name for it. It's called delay. And we will use the notation like this. Z with an inverse in the box, OK? And whenever we have a Z in the, in, with an inverse in the box, that means the output of this delay is going to be the, the output at time n is going to be the value of x at n minus 1. Okay? So this is a memory that stores the value of the input in the previous time instant. Okay? That the output will be the input of the previous time instant. That's delay. Okay. So for example, this is xn. 0, 1, 2, like so. Then output will be a shift to the shift to the right by 1. So then the two non-zero samples will come here, one and the three, right? So that would be y n. Suppose we have two delay. This is x n. Now what's going to be the output here? y n is, how is y n related to the input? How is it related to the input? x n minus 2. Okay, thank you. So the output is going to be the value of the input two units of time back. An example of system, okay? Suppose I have a system, okay, xn and the yn, okay? 
and output is related to the input in some way, right? And uh, in this particular case, yn is related to the input in this, in this way. Is it related to the input in this way? It has some addition. See, we are adding up signal together, right? right. And then it also needs multiplication. There's a scalar over 1 over m plus 1, right? What else does it need? An adder and, and a multiplier. And what else? Delay. Yes, thank you. Because we need values of x in the past, the previous time instant, the previous, all the way to the m times back, m units of time back. Okay. Right? So, um, let's look at an example. For example, m is equal to 4. Oh, m is too many. I don't want to write so many. m equal to 3. Then yn is equal to 1 over 4. xn plus xm minus 1 plus xn minus 2 plus xn minus 3. m equal to 3, then this is a, um, yn is like this, okay? Why is it called a moving average? Have you ever seen something like this before? No? Okay. If we want to compute the value of a y at a certain, say, n0, then we need the value of x at n0, and n0 minus 1, and n0 minus 2, and n0 minus 3. Okay, so let's say this is our x, and uh, this is n0, this is n0, right? So what does it do? What does the system do? It takes the value of x n0, n0 minus 1, n0 minus 2, n0 minus 3, okay, four samples. So n0 is here, so it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, these four samples, right? n0. This is n, and this is xn. So we take the value of x at n0, n0 minus 1, n0 minus 2, n0 minus 3. We add them up and divide them by 4. So we are taking the average of these four samples. We're taking the average of these four samples, right? Okay. Now, let's say we are talking about n0 plus 1. Let's say we are n0 plus 1, n0 plus 1, n0 plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. Okay. Then, still, the system is taking average, right? But which samples are we taking average over? That would be n0 plus 1. So it's this one n0, n0, that's this one, and then n0 minus 1, that's this one, n0 minus 2, it's this one, okay? So now, again, we are taking m average, but which four samples? These four samples, right? So what the system, so why is it called a moving average? Because first you take the average of these four samples, and then it's like a window. So you have a window. With a window here, you're taking the average of these four samples, and then you move this window by one time instant, and you're taking the average of these new four samples. So that's why it's called a moving average system. And in this particular case, we say this is a four point moving average system. This is a four point moving average system. And for this one, this will be how many points of moving average? That will be taking the average of n plus one samples, right? So it's n plus one moving average m plus one point moving average. All right, and the moving average system, we can make it more general. For example, 
um, instead of in this averaging, every sample is multiplied by this scalar. Okay, and we can make it more general by using a more general scaling, a different scaling for each sample. For example, weighted average. Y n is equal to. We are making it more general by making this a scalar more general. So now each sample is multiplied with a different scalar instead of the same scalar, one over four. Okay, so here we can have different weighting for each sample, and this is a, a weighted average. And if we let m goes to infinity, then we have yn equal to bk x n minus k. K from zero to infinity. Here the average is for xn, xn minus one to xn minus m. And if we continue on and on and on and on, then we can have xn minus k, k, n minus k. And each coefficient, each sample is multiplied by a bk, k. And k goes from zero to infinity. That would be even more general. And does this look like something that you are familiar with? Look like some formula? that you have seen before. This is something we call convolutional sum. Convolutional sum. And of course, if for continuous time, the convolution does not involve summation, it is for continuous time. Convolution would be something like this, right? That would be something like this. And this is the continuous time convolutional integral, and this is the discrete time convolutional sum. Okay. What kind of system has, can we talk about convolution? In continuous time, we talked about convolution all the time, right? But it's actually specific to one type of system. What type of system is that? Linear time invariant system. Thank you, thank you very, very much. Yes, this is only when LT in LTI system we talked about convolution. Okay. Why is LTI so important? Oh yes, that's right, because the LTI system is very convenient, right? You only need the output for one input, and then you know everything, right? So LTI system is very, very convenient. But uh, is it useful? It's very convenient, right? But, but if it's not widely, spread, widely available, such a system is not something that we see every day, then even if it's convenient, we, can still, we cannot use it. So is this type of system very useful? Oh well, it is. It is convenient and it's very useful. That's why we study it so much. And that's going to be the type of system that we will be talking about in this class as well.